So this is section 3.9. And we're going to solve what are called um, nonlinear equations. So we're used to, we've done work with linear equations, things like y equals 3x plus, whoops, sorry, plus 4, things like that. Uh, now we want to do things, and these they're called linear equations, right, because they graph to a straight line. So we're going to solve things that don't necessarily graph to a straight line. So there's a couple different types we'll deal with. Uh, first thing we'll deal with with things like um, x squared equals some number. So x squared equals 49. So what I'd like you to think about when you're working on these is the, this idea of undoing. So if I think about squaring, squaring is um, a process where you multiply this something by itself. I want to undo that. I want to find the thing that undoes squaring, and it's square root. So x squared and square root are, uh, they're not complete inverses, and I'll talk about that in a second, but they, they undo each other in a way. In other words, if I want to undo x squared, um, I'm going to use square root. And before I, before I use square root on this, you know, think about this is actually asking a question. What number times itself would give you 49? That's really what we're answering. And sometimes there's more than one answer to an equation. So the thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to square root both sides. I'm going to undo, undo that square rooting. And I'm going to leave a step out right now. There's actually should be a plus or minus right here. And I'll talk about why in a minute. Um, square root and squaring, those undo each other. So that's x. Square root of 49. I either know it or I can, I can use my calculator, you know, if I don't know it. And notice on the calculator, these inverse functions are opposite each other, like one's up above and one's on the button. So if I want square root, I can go second and then that button. And I want the square root of 49. And the square root of 49 is 7. So if you're thinking square root of 49 is 7, you are absolutely right. It is 7. So x is equal to 7. Now, let's hold up just for one sec, because there's actually another number that if I multiply it by itself, it would also give me 49. Like 7 squared is 49, right? Because 7 times 7 is 49. So that's good. And notice I have a positive, a positive number times a positive number gives me a positive. But remember, a negative times a negative also gives me a positive. So if I went negative 7 squared, and notice I wrote it like this inside the parentheses. This means negative 7 times negative 7, which would give me a positive 49 as well. So x is 7. It's also equal to negative 7. So on these types of problems where I have an x squared, I need to look at all the possibilities. And one thing to remember is if you, 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 the math person here, bring in that square root, a plus or minus is going to come with it. Always. Um, so my steps here would probably have looked like plus or minus square root of 49. That's plus or minus 7. And notice... Um, that language plus or minus seven, so plus seven or minus seven. So out of these two answers, I found everything that could be a solution to x squared equals forty-nine. Let's do another one like that. Uh, x squared equals eighty-one. Say. So if I'm solving that, um, I have this this squared. So I'm going to square root both sides to undo it. X squared, square root of eighty-one. I brought in that square root, so a plus or minus comes with it. Um, square root of x squared is just x right, because those undo each other. I still have my plus or minus square root of 81. I know it, or I can do it my calculator is 9. So x is plus or minus 9. I can leave my answer like this, or I could say x is equal to negative 9 or 9. And the order that you write it in doesn't really matter very much, like I did it in different orders here and here. Technically, you should write these in ascending order, so like the negative should come first, and then the, and then the next one. All right, let's do another problem similar to this. Uh, let's say I had something like 3x squared is equal to 300. Now, it would be premature for me right now to square root. Because notice this says 3 times x squared equals 300. So if I knew x, um, I would square it. And then I would multiply by 3. Right? Like if x was 5, I go 5 squared. And then whatever that answer is times 3. 5 squared and then times 3. So I want to undo those in reverse. So I'm going to undo this multiply by 3 uh, first. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by 3. And again, I'm just undoing times 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Now I have x squared equals 
300 divided by 3 is 100. Now that x squared is all alone, now I can square root both sides. So square root of x squared equals square root of 100. Remember, I brought in the square root, so I bring a plus or minus in with it. x is equal to plus or minus 10. So I could say x is equal to negative 10 or positive 10. Let's do another one kind of like that. Um, how about if I had 7x squared equals 112? Well, I want to undo it. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by 7 to get rid of that 7, because it's 7 times that. And notice if I do that, I end up with x squared equals 112 divided by 7. I could do that on my calculator. 16. All right, that's great. So now I can square root both sides. Square root of x squared equals plus or minus. That's going to come in because I brought in the square root. x equals plus or minus 4. All right, I'm going to do one more little set of square root type problems. And instead of multiplication, what if we had an addition? Something like x squared minus 6 equals 19. We need to solve it. So, uh, first thing I'm going to do is get this x squared all alone. So, I'm going to undo this minus 6 by adding 6 to both sides. Plus 6. Plus 6. Uh, x squared is 25. Now that my x squared is all alone, I can square root both sides. Plus or minus comes in with my square root. x is equal to plus or minus 5. Great. So, you'll see some problems that are, that are like that. Um, remember, square root and squaring are inverses of each other. They undo. I'm going to erase, and then we'll do another set of uh, another type of problem. I have some problems uh, that I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to be given the square root, and I want to solve for x. So remember, square root and squaring are inverses of each other. So if I have square root of x equals 7, this is asking what number, if I square root it, would give me 7. Now, um, before I was getting two answers, I'm only going to get one answer in this, in this one. Because what I want to do is undo that square root. And the way that I undo square root is squaring. So I'm going to square both sides. That's just x. 7 squared, 7 times itself, whoops, oop, is 49. So x is 49. There's only one answer to this. Um, notice negative 49 wouldn't work if I go square root of 49. I'm going to get an error on my calculator, or I'll get an imaginary number. So let's do something like this. Uh, square root of x equals, let's say it equals um, 9. Now, sometimes um, on this type of problem, people would say, oh, the answer is 3. And they would make a mistake. Like, they need to slow down a little bit and just think about what's going on here. The square root of what would equal 9? Well, this is going to have to be bigger, larger than 9, greater than 9. Uh, what times, like, um, what's, never mind. I'm going to undo this, so I'm going to square both sides. That's just x. Inverse, um, inverse, the inverse of squaring is square root. 9 squared is 81. Notice if I put it back in, square root of 81 is 9. Great. A um, couple more like this. What if I had x plus 5, square root of that? equals um, 6. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. All right, that's crazy. Notice that like, that whole x plus 5 is under the square root. So I can't subtract 5 here yet. I want to get rid of this square root first. It's that thing that's furthest outside. So I'm going to square both sides. Notice if I do that, the square root and the squaring cancel each other out. So I'm left with x plus 5. 6 squared um, sometimes people would write 12, You're just making that mistake, it's 36, right? 6 times 6. And now to solve this, I'll subtract 5 from both sides. So that x would equal 31. Now, these are easy to check. Plug the 31 back in for x. 31 plus 5, square root it, you should get 6. One more example like this. Square root of x minus uh, 10 equals 3. All right, let's do it. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is square both sides. That gets rid of my square root. 
x minus 10 equals 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. And now I notice that this is x minus 10. I want to undo that subtraction, so I'm going to add 10 to both sides. And x equals 19. So um, square rooting undoes squaring, squaring undoes square rooting. And if I have stuff inside the square root, I get rid of the square root first by squaring, and then I can um, you know, take care of the rest of it, like subtract the 5 or add the 10. I'm going to erase. I'm going to talk about just one more type of problem. So just one more type of problem. And these are problems where we have x in the denominator. So let's say I had 1 over 3 times x equals 7, and I want to solve for x. I want to know what x value would make this true if I plug it in. So um, I think that what I will do here, and this is, this is pretty interesting to me. Notice this means 1 divided by 3x, 1 divided by 3x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by that 3x. And what that does is that, um, notice it brings that out of that denominator there. 3x divided by 3x is just 1. And on this right-hand side, I can go 7 times 3, well, that's 21 times x. And remember, I'm solving for x, so I want to get x all alone. So it's 21 times x, so I can divide both sides by 21. So it looks like x is 1 over 21. Wow, I wrote 12. 1 over 21. And I can do my answer that way. I can leave it as a fraction. Um, or if, you know, if I want to use my calculator and go 1 divided by 21 and then round it off, I could do it that way too. Do another problem like this. 1 over uh, 5x equals 9. All right, same idea. I'm going to multiply both sides by 5x. And notice I'm doing that because this is divide by 5x. 5x divided by 5x is 1. That leaves me a 1 over here. Uh, 9 times 5 is 45. I want to work on that right-hand side to get x all alone. So I'm going to divide both sides by 45. Undo that multiplication. 1 45ths. 1 45th. x is equal to 1 45th. I can leave it as a fraction. I can turn it into a decimal. All right, so three types of problems that I want you to solve. Um, things that have square roots in them, whoops, this one, things that are squared, and things that have x's in the denominator. And uh, that's it. Message me if you have any questions, and good luck with that assignment.